Okay, so platelet has, actually platelet has a lot of roles. Okay, not only in coagulation, it also plays a role in inflammation. Okay, it has uh, alpha granules and also dense granules. Okay, which secretes a lot of mediators. Okay, so um, so uh, I think I've shared this also in a, um, a previous lecture in a in a normal cell normal cell of inflammation. If as you can see in the diagram, uh, besides the granule inside of the platelet, it also carry a lot of glycoproteins as well as receptors for a lot of mediators in the platelet. So the glycoprotein we will. Uh, there are a few types of glycoprotein on top on the on the membrane of the platelet, okay, which plays a role in binding to your fibrin fibrinogen as well as to your van Willebrand factor as well as to attach to other platelets, okay, in a when, in a platelet division. So you can see there's also receptor for other mediators such as nephrine, ADP, thrombin, okay, uh, platelet activation factors, collagen, thrombocene, so, um, so activation of, so this plays a very important role when um, platelet is activated, okay, so whatever that is released, from the platelet activation, okay, such as your ADP, okay, and the formation of thrombin will also bind to this receptor on the platelet, platelet to further activate the platelets, okay. All right, so glycoprotein, we talk about glycoprotein, important for platelet adhesions and aggregation, okay. The outer surface of the platelet itself, okay, uh, provide the membrane phospholipid important for the formation of coagulation okay if you learn later about the coagulation cascade okay the few steps of coagulation which requires the attachment to the membrane phospholipid of the platelet okay all right so dense of dense and alpha granules contain mediators especially released during platelet activation Okay, and on top of that, there's also lysosomes and peroxisomes, which release enzymes and catalysts during inflammation. Okay, so on top of all the granules release and all that during platelet activation, if you can uh, appreciate the pathway that is uh, shown there, there's also the formation of thrombosin A2 from prostaglandin. Okay, this thrombosin activity will be secreted out, which also play a role in the uh, homeostasis. Okay, so you can see on the diagram as well, the GP, uh, the glycoprotein attached, uh, used during adhesion, as well as attached to the fibrinogen for aggregation. Okay, and on the bottom part is where the coagulation cascade takes place on the membrane phospholipid. Okay. Um, and the secretion of thrombosin A2. Okay, so uh, that is role of platelet. Okay, quite a huge role of platelet. All right. So a little bit on von Willebrand factor, it is involved in platelet adhesion and aggregation. It is actually a large multimeric complex and it is also a carrier for factor 8. So factor 8 needs for uh, von Willebrand factor to be carried to play its role in the coagulation cascade. It is synthesized in endothelial cells and megakaryocytes. Okay, so in end in in endothelial cells, it is stored in Weibel pellet bodies and it is also stored in alpha granules in the platelets itself. Okay? All right. This is an overview of coagulation cascade. I like to, I mean, there are a lot of diagrams on coagulation cascade. 
um, I like to use this one first of all because it shows also all your inhibitors together with your 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 steps. You know the coagulation, the two uh, pathways, as well as your fibrinolysis, and it also shows the inhibitors. But you can use any coagulation cascade pathway that you feel comfortable and easy for you to understand. Yeah. That's this is another one which is uh, this uh, which is quite helpful for you to to go through, okay. But this is less comprehensive, okay. So homeostasis, okay. So first of all, um, uh, I mentioned this earlier. A healthy vasculature, okay. A healthy blood vessels, or in other words. The a blood vessel which is not injured, okay, the circulating platelets are protected in such a way to maintain in its inactive form, okay. So mainly it is maintained by the endothelium by this three mechanism. First, by the release of nitric oxide, remember. So it promotes vasodilatation. It is also promote uh, inhibit platelet aggregation. Okay, it is. It also have a membrane associated ADPase. Okay, okay. You will learn later ADP, adenosine diphosphate. Okay, ADP is an is an important mediator that is released by the dense granule that plays a role during platelet activation. Okay, so the endothelial cells has a membrane associated adipase which will degrade this ADP. So it keeps the platelet at, it, at its inactive forms. So another substance that is released by the, by the endothelial cells are your prostacycline, PGI1. Okay, which, um, which is uh, also a vasodilator. So this three mechanism keeps the platelet at, at its inactive way in a healthy vessels. Okay, in a vessel that is not injured. Okay, so what happened when there is injury to the vessels? Okay, so there are four important steps. Okay, immediately there's vasoconstriction that occurs okay and then uh, primary hemostasis start to occur which form plaque platelet plaque which is sort of unstable okay so this process process takes a few seconds okay this will follow by secondary homeostasis formation in which stable fibrin will form on top of the unstable plaque yeah, okay, so this will take minutes, okay? So in the end, at the same time, your fibrinolytic um, uh, pathway start to be initiated, okay? To make sure that only the, the, type, the part of the vessels that is injured, uh, to, to make sure that the fibrin clot only uh, confined to the area of the injured vessel. Okay? Understand? Alright, so these are the steps that we are going to go through in the next one and a half hour. Okay. So again, um, so, so it's the same thing. The, 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 the three uh, important steps Vasoconstriction, platelet plug and fibrin clot. Okay, first we're going to talk about primary homeostasis. Yeah, primary homeostasis consists of vasoconstriction and platelet plug. As we mentioned earlier, vasoconstriction only starts is a very immediate process. Okay, some books only discuss about the platelet plug formation, but either way, uh, vasoconstriction and platelet plug together form primary homeostasis. The end result. The end result of primary homeostasis is the formation of platelet plug. Okay, so it starts generally. It starts with exposure of the collagen. Um, 
which exposed to the platelets. Okay. And this starts the activation of platelets. Okay, then the platelet will release platelet factors from its granules, which attracts more platelets, which there will be aggregation, okay, and adhesions of platelet, which forms platelet plaque. So, in general, these are the mechanism. Okay. So let's talk about uh, the first step of the primary homeostasis, which is vasoconstriction. What caused the vasoconstriction in an injured vessel? Anyone? Anyone? Okay, so so basically, uh, it is a very it's, it's sort of um, a very quick process. Okay, um, in uh, there are three things that can happen. Eh? So uh, first, the endothelial cells also uh, release endothelin. Endothelin. Endothelin is a potent vessel constrictor. Uh, constrict, constrictor. Okay, um, with uh, the injured vessel, the nociceptor is also stimulated, so there will be reflex vasoconstriction. Okay, and another thing, remember, underneath the endothelia, there are extracellular metric includes collagen. Okay, so there will be myometric, uh, sort of myogenic uh, action of this collagen, which uh, immediately cause vasoconstriction. Okay, so um, reflex vasoconstriction as a response to injury. Okay, uh, activation of the collagen underneath the endothelium. Okay, so the myogenic. Doctor, uh, can you please yeah. repeat why, uh, what causes vasoconstriction? Okay, first, the endothelium itself release endothelin. Endothelin is a potent vasoconstrictor. So when it's injured, the endothelial cell release endothelin. Okay, you can refer to the diagram there. Okay, so injury also stimulates a refract vaso. Uh, it uh, sort of um, uh, stimulate the nerve. Okay, the nociceptor underneath the site of injury, which cause a reflex vasoconstriction. Okay, and of course, the collagen underneath the uh, endothelium are also stimulated, stimulated, okay, which cause uh, all this cause vasoconstriction. Okay, you will learn later, you will learn later with the activation of, um, of platelet, okay, the platelet also. Um, also release thrombosin A2, okay, as well as serotonin, which plays a role in platelet aggregation, okay, so this also cause vasoconstriction. So, in the process of homeostasis itself, even with the plug formation, there are also further vasoconstriction that sort of squeeze your platelet together to enhance the aggregation. But as for the initial, initial a uh, step of vasoconstriction, there are endothelin, reflex vasoconstriction or myogenic uh, reflex and activation of collagen. Okay? So, after the vasoconstriction, okay, uh, then there will be exposure of your platelet to your collagen underneath the endothelium. Okay? So, there are a few steps, as I mentioned earlier, first step, as the exposure occur, the, 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 there'll be process of platelet adhesion, okay, so these are the initial steps for the platelet to be activated, okay, platelet exposed to the collagen, okay, so it will be, it will adhere to the collagen, Okay, through binding via von Willebrand factor. 
Okay, so platelet adhesions, so activated platelet will change its shape to become more sticky. Okay, and then following that, there will be granules release. Okay, to further recruit more platelet as well as to cause further aggregation of plaque. Okay, so we will go. Uh, so we will talk more about the adhesion and aggregation of platelet in the formation of platelet plaque. Okay, so uh, platelet adhesion, as you have vascular injury, platelet encounter. So the platelet is exposed to the connective tissue underneath the underneath the um, uh, endothelium, such as one Willebrand factor as well as collagen. So, so for adhesion, okay, so the platelet has to attach to the von Willebrand factor which attach to the collagen, okay? Do so you understand what I mean? So now the platelet is attached to the collagen, right? So in between that is von Willebrand factor. Okay, so how does the platelet attached to this von Willebrand factor, it's via the surface re receptor glycoprotein 1B. Okay, so remember we talked earlier on the surface of platelet, there are a few glycoprotein. So glycoprotein 1B in particular, it can bind to the von Willebrand factor, okay, with, which is released when there is a when there is um, injured to the endothelial cells, okay, so this von Willebrand factor will attach to the collagen, okay, so it forms a bridge between your platelet with your collagen underneath, okay, so in between our von Willebrand factor via GP1B, okay, so as it attached. Okay, so the platelet will change its shape into what we call a spiky shape, more spiky shape to make it more um, sticky to each other. So initially, it's a, it's a rounded disc shape. I have the diagram there on the, on the screen. Yeah, uh, smooth spiky shape turn in shape into, uh, sorry, smooth disc shape into a spiky shape. Okay. Uh, in a way, it increases its surface area, okay? So this change in shape increases the surface area for more binding of platelet. So we are moving actually into uh, aggregation of platelet, okay? So at the same time, it alters the affinity of another type of glycoprotein, which is glycoprotein 2B3A, okay? So it, is incre it increases... The this type of glycoprotein to be to have more affinity for fibrinogen. Okay. All right. So this activation as well, changing in shape as well, cause the translocation of negatively charged phospholipid. Remember, I say the top of the platelet. On top of the platelet, it forms the surface for binding of coagulation factors. Okay. These are more of a calcium, um, calcium depending fa uh, coagulation factor. So the negatively uh, translocation of negatively charged phospholipid give uh, affinity for calcium to bind so that the coagulation factors, a coagulation cascade can take place on its surface. Okay, so. In platelet activation, one of the process is changes in shape, okay? And another thing that happened during platelet activation are the release of granules, okay? So degranulation of platelet. There are a lot of mediators that can be released by the granules, okay? You are not required to memorize all the factors, Okay, all the mediators, but only know the important ones. Okay, the dig, which, which involves in the platelet adhesion uh, aggregation. Okay, 
So the dense granules will release important substance which is your ADP, adenine diphosphate and ATP, okay, Ser serotonin, okay, as well as calcium. Okay, so um, this will uh, help increase in platelet aggregation. Okay, ADP and serotonin will uh, increase in platelet aggregation. Okay, uh, in alpha granules, there are also other uh, other uh, mediators that is released, such as uh, platelet factor four, which is plays a role. Um, it this uh, the, from alpha granules, it also plays role in many things, not only in activation of platelets, also to facilitate in coagulation, also in the uh, in the healing of of um, injury. Okay, for example, PDGF uh, is also released. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, mediators that is released, uh, especially in alpha granules. But the important one are the ADP and your serotonin, calcium as well for coagulation. ADP and serotonin are for the platelet aggregation. Okay, and at the same time, remember I show earlier in the in the platelet diagram where the prostaglandin is uh, converted into thromboxane A2. Okay, this is also a potent inducer of platelet aggregation, will be released during platelet release reaction. So the platelet release reaction, uh, especially with the release of your ADP, serotonin and thromboxin A2 will induce in further platelet aggregation. Okay, so to recap that, the platelet activation, you have... Um, how do I go back? Oh, tak boleh eh. How do I, I need, okay, change, change in shape. Okay, so increase in affinity of GP2B2A, 3A. Okay, increase in affinity of calcium binding to the phospholipid surface. Okay, also release in factors to increase in aggregation. Doctor? Okay. Yes. Where does fibrinogen come in or when does it come in? Okay, the fibrinogen will, fibrinogen is there in the blood, right? Okay, the fibrinogen is there in the blood. So it will come in when there's activation of this G23A, G2B3A, uh, remember? So what is the function of 2B3A? It's, it is to bind, for the platelet to bind to the fibrinogen, okay, and the fibrinogen to bind to the other platelet. So, um, okay, so this one is just the list of uh, the um, content of the granules. Okay, so we talk about that in a platelet aggregation actually, okay? When there is a conformational change, okay, of your glycoprotein 2B and 3A, will have more affinity to bind fibrinogen, fibrinogen in the blood, okay, and it forms bridge between one platelet to another, okay? So one You have platelet adhesion, right? So first, platelet bind to the collagen on the surface of the vessels, on the telium. That one is via von Willebrand, von Willebrand factor, okay? And that one is via glycoprotein 1B, okay? So as the platelet is activated, it changed the, uh, the conformation of your glycoprotein 2B and 3A becomes more potent to bind to the fibrinogen which can stick to another platelet. So this will form platelet aggregation. So 
platelet bind to another platelet in between is fibrinogen. Fibrinogen is there in the blood. Okay? So this is an initial wave of aggregation. Okay? So, so doctor, this yeah. glycoprotein 2B and 3A, they're different from the glycoprotein 1B, right? Yes, it's different. These are different glycoproteins. So if you if you look at the the ultra structure of the platelet just now, there are separate glycoprotein that appears on the surface of the of the of the uh, platelet. There are also other glycoprotein that talk about glycoprotein two A, which can uh, bind directly to the collagen. Okay, so it really dep and there's also yeah. So this, they're also talking about this glycoprotein 2B, 3A, which can also bind to the von Willebrand factor, okay? So, but what you need to know, so it all depends on how much shear there is on the injury. But what you all need to know right now, for now, is glycoprotein 1B, okay, binds platelet to von Willebrand factor to collagen, okay, for adhesion. And glycoprotein 2B3A binds platelet to fibrinogen, okay, to bind to another platelet, okay? All right, so, so that is platelet aggregation, so concurrent activation. So with this, there is activation of thrombin as well, okay? Remember, because this conformation Okay, confirmation, there will be activation of your coagulation cascade. Okay, in which there is activation of your thrombin. Okay, uh, which we will talk later in a secondary homeo homeostasis. Okay, the coagulation factor uh, uh, aggregate uh, activation. But the release of this thrombin itself can also further activate the platelet for further aggregation okay because remember we talked about if you can see here um, on the on top of platelet that is also receptor for thrombin attachment can you see that thrombin attachment via par1 par okay receptor Okay, so the thrombin that will be activated as well in the coagulation cascade, the thrombin itself will also bind to the platelet, further activate the platelet to, to enhance the aggregation. Okay? All right, so that is platelet aggregation. Uh, so this diagram shows uh, uh, what happened during platelet aggregation. So if you can see there um, how the, uh, you know, um, the binding of uh, von Willebrand factor to the, to G, uh, to the, um, to the endothelial cells, okay. And the activation of PAR1 and PAR4 to th for thrombin as a thrombin receptor to further activate the platelet. There's also release of dense granules. There's a release of ADP. Okay. Uh, there's also serotonin release. Serotonin release. Um, uh, which, what is not shown here is actually thrombosin A2. Yeah, thrombosin A2 is also released. Okay, alpha granules will release other substances such as uh, growth factors as well as coagulation factors and inflammatory factors to help with uh, the healing as well as uh, activation of uh, coagulation cascade. Okay, so this is also another diagram that actually it shows the same thing. Okay, except here, uh, it gives a different name. I would, uh, they are like keep GP1A, 2A. These are the ones that can directly uh, attach to the collagen. Okay, but there's GP1B. Uh, some books put it as GP1B95. 
no need to remember all that. So just remember GP1B binds to your von Willebrand factor. So GP2B 3A binds to the fibrinogen. Okay. All right. Okay. So as you can see, the 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 end result is the aggregation. Okay, platelet to platelet in between are the fibrinogen as well as um, on top of the platelet which is now has changed in its shape has uh, provide the, the place for your fibrin for the, pro, the coagulant activity to take place in which the, the coagulation the coagulation cascade will end up in the formation of fibrin, right? So this is when the fibrin will lay out on the already formed um, uh, platelet plug. Okay? All right. So it's the same thing. This one is the same thing. It's just for your reading. Okay. So just to recap on the important uh, mediators that takes place in the process, Adhesion, you have von Willebrand factor, your collagen, thrombin, fibronectin. We did not talk so much about fibronectin just now. Okay, the activation, there's membrane changes. So it's the same thing that is uh, already discussed. Okay. Uh, all right. Next, we go to secondary homeostasis. Okay. So, secondary homeostasis, we are talking about um, activation of your coagulation cascade, okay, which will result in the formation of fibrin, okay, fibrin is uh, insoluble, insoluble fibrin, okay, which eventually will cause stabilis uh, stabilization of the platelet plug. Okay, and this will follow with resorption or resorption process or fibrinolysis process. What happened now? I lost my slide again. Yeah. Try, try <laughs> sharing again. Hi. <laughs> Why? Uh, what happened? Uh? Uh, because I didn't, every time I want to, I have to upload. Okay. Oh, I forgot to record this one. Anyone of you recorded it? Uh, yeah, I'm recording. Record okay. Okay. Now I have to scroll where we were at the secondary homeostasis, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Secondary homeostasis. So. Okay, so we're going to talk about calculation cascade, formation of fibrin, stable clot, and resorption, which is fibrinolysis. Okay, so this diagram shows uh, the process that occur. It is not very clear. Okay. Uh, so as you can see, Generally, there are intrinsic pathway and extrinsic pathway eventually will lead to the formation of fibrin. They will lay out on the plug. Okay. Um, so, uh, next will be clot retraction to stabilize the plug. Okay. It involves contraction of the, uh, of the area of, of the plug. Okay, and then fibrinolysis in which um, where the plug will be dissolved uh, when there's healing occur, okay, or the area which is not need, needed, the fibrinolysis, uh, the plug will be dissolved when um, 
uh, to to prevent further thrombosis. Okay. Okay. So now the first we talk about activation of clothing factor. Okay. So so if the in a primary homeostasis it starts with activation of your platelet. In secondary homeostasis we talk about activation of your clotting factors. Okay. So what is the first step? The first step is when there is um, tissue injury, injury to your endothelial cells, there will be release of your tissue factors. Okay, so there will be release of the tissue factors and this will activate the coagulation uh, cascade, especially your extrinsic, um, extrinsic uh, cascade. Okay, in the extrinsic pathway. Okay, so... Uh, the second one is the phospholipid expression. Remember, with the activation of platelet, it forms a phospholipid uh, layer on top of the plug, which can bind to calcium, also help in the... Uh, also uh, will, will lead to the activation of the part of the coagulation cascade as well. Okay? And this will end up into the thrombin activation. What does the thrombin do? It will turn the fibrinogen into insoluble fibrin, okay, which will be polymerized into mesh of fibrin. Okay, so that is a general overview of what happened if when the clothing factors are activated okay so what actually happened uh, we've talked about this earlier following the platelet aggregation okay and the uh, platelet aggregation and the release of mediators okay the membrane profile uh, the mem membrane phospholipid lead to two reactions of coagulation cascade activation okay which are calcium dependent one is activation of factor 10 okay as well as activation of prothrombin to thrombin okay uh, so this is where the uh, the step takes place on the top of the phospholipid membrane on the platelet so so now the platelet becomes pro-coagulant, yeah? Okay, so what are the coagulation cascade? Is the biological amplification of coagulation factors, which are actually enzymes, to eventually generate thrombin, okay, which are needed to convert fibrinogen to fibrin. Okay, so why fibrin? Fibrin is important to convert the unstable platelet flux into a more firm, definitive, stable plaque. Okay, we should be localized only to the side of injury. Okay, so 13 factors, 12 enzymes, this one you can read. Lah. Okay, um, so activation of these factors will cause the cascade to amplify, to amplify and build uh, the stable plaque. All right, so, uh, so activation will result in deposition of uh, fibrin. Um, okay, so we start with, okay, so this slide uh, explain the intrinsic, fact, uh, the extrinsic factors. Okay, uh, extrinsic factors is actually, um, in the body, it is more important to to in the coagulation cascade as opposed to uh, uh, besides your extrinsic factor. Okay, the intrinsic factor is very fast. Okay, it's a very short pathway. Okay, usually with vascular injury, this will be activated but first, and this is the main main um, pathway that lead to the formation of uh, fibrin. 
Okay, so vascular, in, vascular injury exposes tissue factor at the site and injury. So activate factor 7, which starts the X, oh sorry, X, the extrinsic, extrinsic. Okay, factor 7 is extrinsic. So extrinsic, extrinsic pathway is very important. Okay, it's a very effective um, coagulation cascade. Okay, because it's very fast and it is, uh, and um, study has shown that in the body, um, the extrinsic pathway plays more role, where else in the test tube, okay, it is more of an intrinsic pathway because intrinsic pathway only need a surface factor to be activated, okay. Okay, so when vascular uh, tissue factors activates factor 7, then starts the cascade for thrombin generation. Okay, so this thrombin can further activate uh, positive feedback. Eh? Uh, as the thrombin, where there, there actually there will be a formation of complex of factor 10, phospholipid and calcium. Okay, activated factor 10, phospholipid and calcium, as well as, well as factor 5, form a complex. So this complex will activate thrombin. So, so this will uh, amplify. The activation of thrombin will ampli amplify with the formation more and more thrombin. Okay. So, uh, so the thrombin will cleave fibrinogen into insoluble fibrin to, fun, to form fibrin meshwork. Okay, uh, so fibrin, not only it causes the meshwork on the platelet, it can also further activate platelet. In fact, the thrombin also will further activate platelet by increasing platelet aggregation at the site of injury. Okay. So these are the, uh, okay. So these are the two, the one that I, I circle in red, these are the two uh, pathway or steps that requires the phospholipid that takes place on top of the uh, platelet phospholipid. And uh, the second um, pathway, there is a formation of complex between uh, activated factor 10, calcium, factor 5 and uh, on top of phospholipid with prothrombin. Okay. Uh, prothrombin is factor 2, right? Okay, so this will uh, cause activation of pro, uh, prothrombin to thrombin. Okay, so this the activated thrombin will further uh, amplify the pathway into formation of more and more thrombin. Okay. Okay, so this is another. Uh, this is another um, diagram which actually shows the formation of of formation of the complex, okay, factor 10, factor 5, uh, tissue factors, okay, so basically when we talk, when we talk about the activation, it form the uh, complex which are prothrombin, a prothrombin activator. Okay, so this, uh, okay. This one is just to show the the formation of both. That sort of like occur together the activation of the platelet aggregation and the form of fibrin. Okay, so in the formation of thrombin, the the platelet aggregation is also continue. You know, at the same time, and in the end, it results uh, into the formation of homeostatic plug. Okay, then uh, the next step is uh, clot resorption. Okay, 
so of course in the end on top of the on top of the um, platelet with fibrin meshwork on top of this okay there are also white cells neutrophils uh, is trapped inside the plug okay and there's also contraction of the collagen underneath the area of injury to make it stabilize okay so as you mentioned earlier another system that is also stimulated when this injury occur are the uh, fibrinolytic pathway as well as the activation of the um, of the uh, inhibitors okay so there'll be release of tissue plasmin no, a tissue plasminogen activator okay which activate the fibrinolysis uh, fibrinol fibrinolysis um, uh, system okay so that means what does fibrinolysis mean? Anyone? To break down of a clot. Break okay. down the fibrin. Okay, so break down of the clot. So we're talking about the clot, which is already formed, will be digested by the plasmin. We'll talk about the the, the cascade, the, the pathway later. Okay, so fibrinolysis, meaning the already formed fibrin is digested okay is di digested okay so another uh, role of inhibitors are the inhibitors to block further coagulation to occur okay so they are slightly different there okay one is when already um, clot occurring so fibrinolysis will resolve the clot okay another one is when there's activation of the coagulation cascade, there are inhibitors that is also released to um, to stop more formation of fibrin. Okay, so one of the uh, of the coagulators, uh, uh, are the inhibitors are your the one is the role of thrombomodulin. Remember when I show the earlier slides on the role of um, the role of endothelial cells. There is thrombomodulin that is attached on the endothelial cells. So the role of this thrombomodulin, okay, when there is thrombin, okay, formation of thrombin, thrombin will attach to this thrombomodulin, okay. So it will activate the inhibitors, which is protein C, okay. So protein C will inhibit factor five and factor eight okay which plays a role in the coagulation cascade all right so take note thrombin not only play a role in activation of coagulation it also had play a role at the same time to activate inhibitors yeah okay so that how the whole formation of clot is regulated all right so clot stabilization and resorption, polymerization. Okay. Yes. Do you mind repeating again? Thrombin not only play a role in okay. something. Let's okay. You can see. That's what I like to show. See if I have um. um do I have it here? Um. Where is it wrong bin? I need to show to you. Okay, never mind. Um, as you understand, when the thrombin form, right? Thrombin is part of the coagulation cascade in which when there is formation of thrombin, okay, thrombin will activate fibrinogen. Uh, uh, sorry, will, will convert fibrinogen into fibrin, right? So at the same time, so and so and then the thrombin will be will further uh, activate the cascade to form more and more fibrin. Okay, at the same time, thrombin can will also bind to thrombomodulin. Okay, thrombomodulin 
to activate protein C. Okay, so what does protein C do? Okay, protein C inactivates factor 5 and factor 8. So where does factor 5 and factor 8 comes about? It actually comes here. If you can locate factor 8 and factor 5. Okay, factor 8, okay, bind together with factor 9. Okay, okay, to, to activate factor 10. Okay, activated factor 10 further requires factor 5. Okay, to activate, activate your prothrombin. Okay, so what protein C does, it inactivates both factor 5 and factor 8. So it blocks this this step, okay? Okay, understand? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this thrombin plays a so on top of having a positive feedback to create more thrombin. Okay, so thrombin also uh, also uh, uh, via attach uh, via its uh, attachment to thrombomodulin okay it also uh, activate protein c okay so where were we okay we were here all right so clot stabilization and resorption the polymerized fibrin and platelet aggregates its undergo contraction to form a solid permanent plug okay so this will further prevent, prevent hemorrhage. Remember, initially when we talk about why the clot is formed is to prevent hemorrhage, right? So on top of formation of plug, there's also contraction to further prevent hemorrhage. And there is also a counter regulatory mechanism uh, takes place, which is the activation of tissue plasminogen activator, which, uh, which, uh, activates your fibrinolytic okay so that means when the hemorrhage all are settled now we want to lice resolve the clots right we don't want the clots to be there forever okay so tissue plasminogen activators will be activated okay so the fibrin mesh will lice okay and on top of that okay uh, the clotting cascade will be also halted, okay, um, by the, by the inhibitors, okay, uh -huh. Inhi yeah. For the coagulation cascade, do we have mm -hmm. to know all the factors and the, what they do? <laughs> okay, the coagulation cascade, um, how do you have to know all the factors? Uh, you have to know at least um the important ones okay uh the start of because for uh, you have to know the the factors more when you learn hematology because we're talking about deficiency of which factor causing what you know but for pathology uh, it is uh, actually important for you to know this factor is in which pathway you understand you know you need to know the factor in a different way okay um, uh, I think for the sake of uh, this um, just remember actually actually it's not too difficult you know for you to understand uh, intrinsic is just factor seven right I, I mean uh, you have factors a uh, tissue factor factor seven and then uh, factor 10 okay and then for extrinsic sorry that one was extrinsic for intrinsic you have factor 12 11 9 and 10 so from 10 it goes into a common pathway so I think the important part that you need to understand is actually this two part when uh, the activation of factor 10 takes place in which it requires calcium, phospholipid, 
and it requires factor 8, you know. Okay, factor 8. And the next step, when the active factor 10 uh, activates, uh, ch uh, change the prone thrombin into thrombin, which is, um, um, requires also calcium and factor 5. Okay, you need to know factor 5 and factor 8 because you need to understand the role of protein C. Okay? Understand? So, Doctor, basically we just focus more on this uh, table you gave us. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, you can concentrate on this. I will, I will, um, uh, I will highlight later on what you need to know, I mean, regarding this. Um, coagulation fa uh, factors. I know it looks uh, very crowded because uh, for inhibitors, later uh, in a in a in the next lecture thrombosis, we will be talking also about inhibitors. So there, I will also highlight again on the presence of inhibitors. Okay, but as for now. Um, uh, concentrate on these two steps, okay, uh, as well as how fibrinogen is formed, okay, and I think the next step we'll be talking about fibrinolysis, okay. Uh, fibrinolysis requires tissue plasminogen activator, okay, it requires tissue plasminogen activator, okay, so what tissue plasminogen activator does, okay, it will bind to fibrin, okay, it will, it will bind to fibrin, uh, and it will convert plasminogen to plasmin, okay, it will convert plasminogen to plasmin. So, what does plasmin do? It um, digests fibrinogen. Okay, it, it will it will digest fibrinogen. It will digest all this. Okay, fibrinogen, fibrin, uh, factor five, factor eight, and many proteins into small fibrin. Okay, so that is a general. But what is important in fibrinolytic pathway is uh, what you need to know is plasmin will digest the formed fibrin to dissolve the clot that's all okay so what initiate the activation of plasmin are the formation of tpa okay so the tpa tissue plasminogen activator uh, uh, also uh, uh, will also activated when there is tissue injury by the endothelium okay all right so, on top of that, please bear in mind as well, uh, there are also inhibitors to fibrinolysis, okay? Um, for example, plasminogen activator inhibitors, okay, which inactivate tissue plasminogen activators, okay? There are also alpha-2 antiplasmin and alpha-2 microglobulin which inactivate plasmin okay so and there's also what we call uh thrombin activated fibrinolysis activity or tafi so you see there is a regulation between fibrinolysis and antifibrinolysis as well okay so all these things play a role inter integratedly to make sure that is enough clot is formed only at the injured area, okay? And when the injured injury is already um, resolved, okay? So all the um, plug, all the clot will be re will be uh, resolved. So in the blood. But in our body, not only there's activator or coagulation activator or platelet activation, there is also activator of fibrinolysis and there are series of inhibitors. So these inhibitors inhibits 
inhibits coagulation. Also, there are inhibitors that cause fibrinos, fibrinolysis and there's also inhibitors that inhibits the fibrinolysis. Okay, so there's natural inhibitors, uh, which some are uh, released by the liver, some are uh, from the endothelial cells. Okay? So these are your, um, the fibrinolytic system are very straightforward. Okay, so you just uh, have uh, TPA, okay? So there are tissue plasminogen activator or also something that is called urokinase-like uh, tissue plasminogen activator. So this substance uh, can activate your plasminogen to form plasmin. Okay, there's also factor uh, 12A, remember from the intrinsic pathway, okay, can activate what we call calicrine. This also is a form of plasminogen activator. Okay, so that is more on the intrinsic pathway. But in other, uh, so whatever it is, there is a formation of a few types of uh, activator for the plasminogen, okay, uh, which cause fibrin de degradation. Okay, so fibrin, as it degraded, it will form fibrin degradation product. Okay, so one of the form of fibrin degradation products are your D-dimer. So it is important because D-dimer, we will learn later, it is used to measure the formation of clots in the body. Okay, so it is an indicator. So whenever there are D-dimer, it means there are clots that has occurred in the body. So D-dimer is one of an important uh, markers that is uh, measured in a condition, for example, um, pulmonary embolism, okay, in a DIVC, okay, we, we will learn later about it uh, in hematology, okay, and oh. also in thrombosis. Yes. Uh, so sorry to uh, interrupt, but I can't see the slide. Ah, you can't see the slide? Yeah, it says can't display content. Oh, how long have you not seen the slide? Uh, just now. Like, okay. No. So I need to upload again. Uh -huh, I think so. How many of you cannot see? Oh, sorry. Then I need to upload again. Hey, uh, sorry. Let me just. Uh, we are actually finishing. Uh, browse. Hi. Okay. Okay, just wait a while. Okay, let me just now now can you all see? Yes, bro. I see, yeah? Everyone can see? We are actually... Uh, wait, it's loading. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Can you see now? Yes, Doctor, okay. Thank you. Okay, all right, so let's continue. So we are actually, um, so the first, uh, the, 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 the second um, diagram there shows where uh, the inhibitors to the, inhibitors to the um, plasminogen or, or the inhibitors for the fibrinolysis. Okay, so you have alpha 2 and alpha 1 antiplasmin, alpha 2 microglobulin, you have plasma activator, plasminogen activi activator inhibitors. Okay. Okay. All right. 
Okay, so yeah, so this diagram shows how the plasminogen and the inhibitor acts. Okay, so um, the inhibitor also uh, stimulated by the tr thrombin. Okay, we have tissue plasminogen activator, activator, uh, which uh, actually bind to the fibrin. Okay which bind to the plasmin on the fibrin, okay? So you can see also in the blood vessels, there are also free plasmin, okay? Which, de which uh, deactivated by your alpha-2 antiplasmin, okay? So, so yeah, that is your fibrinolysis and how the fibrinolysis also can be uh, inhibited. Doctor, yeah. where do the plasminogens come from? Are they just flowing in the blood? Plasminogen? Yeah. Tissue plasminogen acti activator, you can find it in the endothelial cell is also. TPA. Some are from endothelial cell. Okay. And what about the plasminogen itself? Sorry? Plasminogen, the plasminogen itself. Yeah, yeah. Plasminogenic, uh, the plasmin. You mean? The plasminogen. Yeah, the plasminogen itself. Okay, the plasminogen itself. It can be in the uh, blood. Okay, the plasminogen is there in the blood. Okay. And yeah, it is in the blood, plasminogen. So the plasminogen, uh, which is the plasminogen, which is bind to the fibrin, okay, uh, will be the, the TPA will act on the plasminogen, which bind to the fibrin. So the plasminogen is there uh, in the blood, okay. And it is broken down into plasmin. Okay, so plasmin uh, bind to the thrombin. Okay, to play its uh, to the sorry, so the fibrin will play its action. Also, you will also see some free plasmin in the blood. Okay, which is for the um, for the complex with the antiplasmin. Okay. All right. Okay. So this, these are actually yeah. These are okay. So you see there the one in the yellow one are the prothrombinase complex. Okay, the complex between uh, factor ten, factor five, calcium and phospholipid. Okay. So these are the important steps in a uh, activation of thrombin. Okay. And this also show um, fibrinolysis as well as inhibition of fibrinolysis. Okay. All right. Okay, so this one show, uh, shows uh, inhibitors. Okay, some of the inhibitors inhibits, uh, inhibits coagulation. Some uh, actually uh, inhibit fibrinolysis. Okay. Okay. So, yes. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I actually like to uh, like to see this diagram because the inhibitors, you know, uh, if you notice the protein C, uh, protein C, Okay, act by the attachment of 2A to the thrombomodulin. 2A are your activated thrombin, right? Activated thrombin binds to the thrombomodulin, okay, and activate uh, protein C. So the activated protein C will activate protein S, okay, so this will inhibit factor 8 and factor 5, okay? 
So these are one of uh, the inhibitors. You also have uh, C1 inhibitors that inhibits factor 11. Mm. Uh, so, so yeah, so you have uh, your TPA which activates your uh, your fibrinolysis, but on top of that, you also have inhibitors to your plasminogen which inhibits the fibrinolysis. Okay, all right. So, Doctor, can what does the yeah. A mean? So you Sorry? see factor, you see like factor eleven A. What does the A mean here? Activated factor eleven. Oh, okay. Hello, doctor. Yes. Uh, what does the uh, besides the number five? There's an asterisk beside it. What does it mean? Where the number five? Uh, yeah. In Roman. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, five and two. And two. Okay, uh, there are also inhibitors to, to factor 5 and factor, I think, I'm also not sure why that. I'm not sure why the asterisk in there. But there, you have to bear in mind there are also uh, other uh, factors, uh, inhibitors. For example, antithrombin 3, antithrombin 3, which inhibits uh, all the, the factors in the intrinsic pathway, okay? And it is also okay, by heparin. Uh, this antithrombin, that's also inhibitor, okay, which is antithrombin, which uh, inhibits yani, 10A, 9A, 11a i'm not quite sure why the asterisk at the two and five i'm not i'm not quite sure but i guess that shows hmm, i'm not very sure about that but pay attention on the presence of inhibitors in here so we have uh protein c okay sorry we have thrombomodulin okay which activate protein C, okay, which activate, which inhibits, okay, protein C inhibits via protein S, inhibits factor 8 and factor 5, okay, okay, protein C itself also have protein C inhibitors, that's how complicated things are, okay, um, there is also, if you see up there, up there where the extrinsic pathway, there's also tissue factor uh, inhibit, inhibitor. Okay, tissue factor plasma inhibitor. Okay, so this inhibits tissue factor. Okay, uh, so remember we say tissue factor starts the coagulation in extrinsic pathway, so there's also inhibitor to tissue factors okay there's also antithrombin okay so antithrombin uh, binds thrombin so again thrombin as inhibitor okay it binds to thrombin so it actually uh, uh, inhibits uh, the factor uh, factor 2 which is your thrombin okay and 10 9 11 so all the factors in intrinsic pathway so antithrombin and heparin cofactor also acts via activation of your antithrombin okay uh, okay so you have alpha 1 nt2 plus so all the in important inhibitors are in this diagram actually okay so can we move to Coagulation test. Okay, coagulation. Okay, coagulation tests. I just going to spend a very brief, uh, very very briefly only. Okay, because you are not required to know so much on the test. It will only be applicable 
um, in um, uh, year two, but along the way, you will be exposed to, uh, especially when you start your PBL or your your uh, systems, you might come across uh, this test in your case, you know, so at least you know what this means, okay? So, um, there are lists of coagulation tests that can be done in the lab depending on what do you want to investigate, depending on uh, what you are suspicious of. But the basic tests for coagulation, okay, are the one that I uh, that I mark red, okay? First, of course, the routine tests are your full blood count in which you want to see the platelet count, okay? Uh, another specific coagulation test that is done are uh, your PT, okay, prothrombin time, and APTT, activated prothrombin time, okay, and uh, also another uh, one you can do is fibrinogen, you can measure the fibrinogen. Another one that I forgot to put here are the fibrinogen de degradation product. Okay, I mentioned earlier your FDP, fibrinogen degradation product, in particular your D dimer. D dimer, perhaps I think I will add in the slide later. The D dimer is an important, uh, important marker that is used to show that, to see whether there is clotting going on in the blood or not. Okay. All of right. The so FDP is it under basic screen or the specialized? FDP, fibrin degradation product. Well, it is it is uh, widely available actually, but it's not a routine test. It is not a routine test. Like PT APTT is more or less routine. You know, it can easily mm -hmm. be done. Okay. So, so a. Uh, so actually, um, when you order a coagulation profile, the main, the basic one is just PT, APTT and your FBC. That is the coagulation profile, basic coagulation profile. Upon request, you might want to request for fib uh, fibrinogen. You want to see the fibrinogen for, for some reason. And... Um, your FDP, you have to specifically ask for it. It is not routine. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, okay, so this one, okay. Oh, I thought I've removed this. Okay, so mixing study, okay, thrombin time, also, although it's sort of routine, but it is not done uh, TT, yeah, your thrombin time, it is not done routinely because it doesn't add so much value. APT, APTT is, is actually enough to, for you to investigate coagulation. Yeah? So others here, the uncommon one, they are not done, okay, uh, in the lab, usually, actually. Your thrombin time, mixing study, only when it's requested. Okay. Uh, even the platelet function test, uh, you uh, you can test the platelet function, but you can do in the lab routinely is you can do just platelet count. You want to see how many platelet do you have? Is it high or is it low or is it normal? Okay. But if you suspect any um, any platelet dysfunction, this is when you want to do platelet function test, which is very complicated and it's not routine. Okay. Just very very briefly for for thrombin time. Okay, prothrombin time measures your extrinsic pathway. Okay, it measures extrinsic pathway. So basically, your so what they do is um, you put so you take the plasma, okay, the plasma of your blood, okay, and then you put um, calcium, okay? So you put calcium and you put thromboplastin. Thromboplastin, 
uh, um, and uh, you put tissue factor and put a uh, phospholipid. So you put certain amount of this so that you can predict with enough factor, you can predict the clotting time should be like how many seconds, like that, okay? Right, so basically you have your plasma, you remove all the calcium, um, all the calcium that is already there, okay, you kill it, the calcium, okay, first of all, okay, so no, now you have plasma, so in the plasma there are clotting factors, right, okay, so you want to create the extrinsic pathway, so, uh, so you want to put in a tissue factor, And, and you want to put in folipid, okay, to create that um, coagulation to occur, okay. Then you measure the duration. So you measure the duration of fibrin clot, okay. So basically, it measures the extrinsic pathway and the common pathway as well, okay. Okay. So, so it is expressed in INR, okay, because they have, they found the problem is when you give thromboplastin, okay, the thromboplastin uh, types are different with different labs. So, you will get a different reading for the clot to occur. So, what they sought out was the PT time is expressed as in INR, what is called I, uh, International Normalized Ratio, okay? So, enough for you to understand that INR actually address the prothrombin time in a more standardized manner, that's all, okay? So, it is used mainly um, to monitor um, patients on warfarin, Okay, patients on warfarin, for example, so you will take, you will monitor the INR to gather whether this warfarin is sufficient or you need to add or you need to stop the warfarin, you know. So, in patients with um, um, problem with coagulation, for example, patient with uh, atrial fibrillation or um, patient with a valvular problem in which you want to get the blood to be a bit thin to prevent formation of thrombosis. Okay, so this patient is usually will put on warfarin, okay, to control the blood thinness. Okay, so what is measured, what is monitored is their INR level. So that is prothrombin time, okay. So, another one is activated partial thrombos, uh, thromboplastin time, which is APTT. This one is to measure your intrinsic pathway, okay? Intrinsic plus the common pathway, okay? So, what is put in the plasma is um, calcium, partial thromboplastin, Okay, so that means uh, uh, there is no tissue factor because you don't want to activate the extrinsic. So, you just give calcium, partial thromboplastin, okay, uh, phospholip phospholipid, and then you give activating agent such as silica or substance that can provide the surface to activate the intrinsic factors. Okay, so the same thing, you measure the, uh, the duration of the clot formation. Okay, so most of the time uh, when you have uh, like liver problem, um, a general, a general uh, clotting deficiency, okay, you will have prolonged in both PT and APTT. Okay, except for certain condition like hemophilia. Hemophilia is the um, hemophilia is the 
deficiency in factor number lah him factor 7 factor 7 is it factor 7 eight or 7 i'm not sure i think it's 7 <laughs> Okay, now my, you will learn that in a, in a, apa ni? In a hematology, I don't want, I don't want you to be bogged down, bogged down with all these hematology things. Okay. Fibrinogen. Okay, is another, in another uh, test that can be done. Okay. Uh, fibrinogen is an acute phase reactor. It can be measured. Okay, it's synthesized in the liver. Okay, uh, high fibrinogen. You can find a patient uh, in pregnant pregnant woman. They have high fibrinogen. Okay, patient with liver failure and DIVC. The fibrinogen it will be low. Okay, D dimer. D dimer uh, is a uh, is a measure of fibrin degradation products okay so it occurs uh, you will have increase in d dimer whenever there's a lot of clotting is going on in the blood okay okay others which are not actually done the thrombin time it only measure the common pathway okay so it's not commonly done bleeding time only measure the platelet Okay, it only measure the primary uh, phase of hemostasis. Okay, so it measure the primary phase meaning the platelet adherence and aggregation. Okay, it doesn't actually test whether you have uh, blood clot uh, factors deficiency or not. Okay, it is not done because it's very very subjective because what you do is you have you put a nick at certain area usually. At the back of the ear, you put a nick, and you you time on how long will the clot takes place. Okay, so it is very very subject. It's not done. Uh, basically, it's not done. Okay. All right. So uh, yeah. So this is just an example of a typical coagulation panel. Huh? a typical coagulation panel uh, where mostly you will see platelets PT, APTT okay, so PT in this in this case it is in a form of INR and APTT okay, and the fibrinogen have to uh, specifically us and D-dimer okay, so mostly in advanced liver disease And DIC, uh, what is DIC? Anyone? Don't know. Disseminated intravascular coagulation. Okay. DIC is okay. So DIC is a condition where alamak dah habis. Anyway, that's the last slide. Anyway. Okay, disseminated intravascular coagulation in which there are overwhelming uh, coagulation that takes place. So, uh, when there is increase in pro-coagulation, so there are systemic formation of blood clots everywhere. Okay, in which is a pro-coagulation um, condition. But because of there's a lot of blood clotting, you there'll be overuse of your platelet factors, a uh, platelet and coagulation factors. Then you can have bleed. Okay, so it's a very complicated, uh, complicated uh, condition in which pro coagulation you will have blood clots and overconsumption of clotting factors as well will lead to bleeding. Okay, very difficult to treat, you know, because you want to, you have clotting as well as bleeding. Okay, so in this case, you will have a uh, increase in your PT and APTT. I think you will learn more in a hematology as well as in a thrombosis. Okay, um, I lost my slide in the view, but I think 
That's the last slide. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is the last slide. Okay, any question? Any question before we end our session? Uh. No, doctor. Okay. All right. So, okay. So, can some can anyone, um, uh, Akmal, the attendants, yeah, attendant. Yes, uh, all right. Uh, I'll I'll, I'll ask the, the person. You, okay. So you WhatsApp to me. All right. Uh, so, boleh. Can you capture uh, the wait. attendance? Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll try. Because I want to make sure the attendance is captured before we go. All right, Prof. All right, okay. All right, thank you very much. So, see you all tomorrow. Okay. All thank right. you, doctor. Thank Bye. you very much, bro. Okay. Thank you, doctor. 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 Thank you, Thank you, doctor. 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 Thank you, do